In today's lesson on arrays, we're going to be looking at two-dimensional arrays, and this is a part of the Information Technology Grade 12 CAPS syllabus. Now, we have been working with a one-dimensional array. Now, that is just a long strip of individual type of elements. So, for example, if we just looked at that block over there, that could be considered one array. But now with two-dimensional arrays or 2D arrays, we're looking at multiple sets of arrays and the way to think of it is well if this is an array over there and then this is another array because they're all related we can have an array of arrays so this is a whole set of arrays so we can, this is the ideal situation for table data or data that's related to each other so let's take for example you are playing golf and you would have an array from 1 to 18 for all the values that you got on each hole of a golf course but if you were entering a golf tournament, you might have to play those same 18 holes four times. So you could have an array, a 2D array, going from 1 to 18, but then also having from 1 to 4, representing each time you played those 18 holes. So for like this example, where we've got the different school days, and then we've got the, school, the grade 12 classes. And we could have values for, on day 1, what was the A class's number? This could represent the number of uh, students that attended or whatever it represents, whatever that number represents. So let's look at how we can apply 2D arrays. What I've got over here is I've got a simple string grid. If you want to know about string grids, then just go look at our previous video about string grids. And I've got some buttons. And all that I've done is when the form gets created, all that I've done is I've displayed values in the string grid that go from 1 to 4 for each row and 1 to 6 for each column. So if we run the program, you can see it looks something like this. So you can see there's just row and, and column headings. Nothing to do with a 2D array. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go look at the top. I've declared a 2D array. Now, we would normally declare an array like that. The name of the array, array, square brackets, 1 to whatever the range is, 1 to 6 or whatever, of what type of value that it has. But in this case of a 2D array, we would have a comma and we would have the second component or second aspect of it, which says we're going to have 1 to 6, but we're going to have four versions of that 1 to 6. Just like you would do in normal arrays, you don't need to use uh, numbers. You could use uh, characters. So you could go from A to D, for example. And this is quite useful if you're going to make a 2D array of, for example, a seating plan. So that you've got uh, A3, which would be your seat. So it would go, for example, column A, row 3, that type of thing, or the other way around, depending on what you want. For our case, we are simply going to have an array that goes from 1 to 4, and then, or 1 to 6, and then 1 to 4. So there we've got an array. So how do we put values into that array? Well, I'm going to have a button here, and when I click on that button, I'm just going to randomly create numbers to go into that array. So just like we would do with a string grid, if you're going to put values into all the elements of an array, you're going to need a nested for loop. So I'm going to have an i and a j variable of type integer. And I'm going to have a nested for loop. So i is going to go from 1 and we can we know it goes from there's 1 and a 6. I'm going to say 1 to 6. And then we have a second for loop, which is j, that goes from 1 to 4. Okay. And then I'm going to say my array numbers, square bracket, just like you would do, we would normally access an array like that. That would be a 1D array. But for a 2D array, we've got R, comma, J in this case. Now, just to be sure, let's just double check. My R value is going from 1 to 6. Can the first value go from 1 to 6? Yes, it can. Because that's the range. It, would, it wouldn't work very well if I had J, comma, R, because j only goes to 4 and it wouldn't use all the values in the array and then the, the r going to 6 would stop at 4 and wouldn't put in the last two rows of values so we got that synced up quite nicely the first one goes up until 6 the second one goes up until 4 and that is going to equal to some random number out of 100 now the random 100 will return a number from 0 to 99 i'm just going to plus one onto it so that is a, from 1 to 100 and there we go. Now there will be values when I click on that button that will be put into that array. But we won't see anything when I run the program. There's no errors. There's nothing happening. You might say, but where are the numbers? Well, we have simply put values into the array. We haven't actually said display the array in the string grid. And because I'm probably going to do it a lot, I'm going to create a 
place where we can display this. Actually, I'm going to just do it over here. We're going to display those values in the array in the string grid. So I'm going to use my R variable again. That goes from 1 to 6. And then I'm going to have my J variable that goes from 1 to 4. And I'm going to go, well, my string grid, which is string grid data dot cells. Now, I'm going to put R, because if you look at my columns, just to double check, my columns, I've got six columns there, and I've got four rows. So I need R to go first, because R would be the column, because R is going to six. Sometimes it is possible that it is the other way around. I'll explain that later. Let me just do this part. And that is equal to whatever is in array numbers at position R, comma, J. But remember, this is a string grid, and this is returning a bunch of integers. So we need to convert it from a int to a string. So let's have a look and see if it runs. And there we go. All our random numbers are in it. If I click it again, it should be different numbers. And there we go. All these random numbers. If you ever see a situation where you've got some blank cells, either at the side or at the bottom, then it might mean that you have this the wrong way around. So just double check that your R and your J are the right way around. And there are sometimes cases where the way they want you to display the array is very different to the way you declare it. So it is possible sometimes where you would have string grid cells R, J, but the array would be J, R. That is possible, but you can see that when you display it and see if there are any mistakes, and you can just swap them around. Okay, we've done that. Now let's do the sum of all those random numbers. So let's do a program that's going to do that, or a function that's do that. For R, we're going to we're going to go through each element in the array. So it's a good idea to have our I and J variable. We're going to go for R. I'm actually just going to copy this because we're going to do this so many times. Just copy that. Okay, and so what are we going to do? We're going to add all the numbers. So I'm going to make a sum variable, and I'm going to initialize that sum variable to zero. And then for each element in the array, I'm going to say, you know what, take that sum variable, take whatever's inside the sum variable at the moment, which the first time it does, it starts off at zero, and take whatever is in the array at position R, which we know goes up until six. That's actually numbers, sorry. Goes until six, and J which goes up until 4. So what's going to happen here is R is going to become a 1. And then it drops down to the J. Now J will become 1. So 1, 1's value will be put into the sum, whatever the random number is. Then J will become a 2. So it'll go 1, 2 and add it into sum. 1, 3, 1, 4. When it reaches the end of 4, it then pops out of this for loop back to the R for loop, which now becomes a 2. And then it'll be 2, 1. 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, and then pops back out, and so on, and so on, until it reaches the end of those numbers. So that should add up all the numbers in the array. And then, over here, we're just going to say show message, nice little message saying sum of numbers is, and we're going to say int to string sum. So we've added up all the numbers in the string. So there's our random numbers, and if we want to see what the sum of the numbers are, there we go. If we add up all those numbers, it'll equal to 1,291. If I do another set of random numbers, then it'll obviously give me a different value. There we go. So that's great. That's working. Now this algorithm that adds up all the numbers in the 2D array is very similar to what you would do for a normal array. The only difference really is that you've got a second for loop, and that you referencing your arrays by r comma j that's the only real difference and any of your algorithms for arrays whether it's finding the average or counting the numbers or finding the max or the min is exactly the same the only difference again is how you reference the array and that you've got a second loop to go through the rows and the columns of the array the last example that i want to do is i'm going to find the average row you'll notice when i ran the program that I've left out this last row. I've added a row just for the sake of it. I'm going to write code that's going to find the average of each individual row. So take that row and find the average of it. Take that row, find the average of it, and so on. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it on this button. And again, we're going to have a variable r and j of type integer. And we are going to go now. Now, if we think about it first, let's let's just double check ourselves. 
we are going to start with row one and then go column one two three four five so i must first start from one to four before i go from one to six because we're starting with row one whatever we want to sum that's what you must use that's the first for loop so our first for loop is doing the rows so that must go from one to four so for r in this case we're going to go from one to four okay so let's actually call it r row and then we'll make this r column just so we get, don't get confused so we're going to start summing all the rows so we start with the row and then for each row for row one we're going to go one to six go through each element of that one okay and we need to find the average so we know that there are six values in each one so i'm going to create a sum variable which is going to find the sum of each one and we are going to initialize some now i'm going to initialize some here if you think this is a mistake that's okay we'll just discuss it later and you'll see why okay so we're going to take each one we're going to say sum is equal to sum plus the array numbers okay so which one first the one that goes to six is our call and the one that goes to four is our row because remember the first value goes to six and our, our call goes to six and our row goes to four and then when we are finished doing that row so i only do this for every row so i should probably have a begin end here a begin end and then once you've added all the numbers up for that row so once all of that adding up we actually don't need to begin there we need it over here we need to say the average we need to show the average so the, let's make an average variable I should probably call it i average to see if it's keeping my convention equals sum divided by six but you know dividing by six means it can't be an integer so it should actually be a real and then we want to display that average in the string grid we don't want to display it in the array because the array has just got the data in dot cells square bracket now here's where we've got to think ah uh, first time i want to do it i'm going to be doing it in one two three four so the first position the actual row is going to be r so the row in this case will always be something comma r okay or r not r so it'll be the row let's go r call so it's the first one's the r call and then the r row let's try that see what it does Okay, so that must equal to whatever is the average. But remember, the cells is a string, so it must convert it from a float to a string. Okay, now let's just look over here. We are always going to be displaying it in this column over here, which is always going to be column 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven so we are always displaying in column seven so the column value will stay constant so that call value will always be a seven but the row will be different depending on if it's row one or row two now i want to do all of this for each row so that is why i should have a begin here and over here i should have an end so that i know that i'm doing all of this for each and every row so let's run the program and see if it does anything hopefully there are no errors now it's not going to work properly and i'll show you why we're going to select our random numbers there they are and we're now going to find the average of the row now you'll notice the averages increase and the reason for that is because we initialized sum outside of both arrays now when we are finished doing row one we want to reinitialize sum to zero so that is why that sum should actually move inside the first for loop so that we initialize some every time we start finding the average of a new row so now it should look a lot better random numbers and there we go those look a lot more representative for more videos about arrays and string grids please go to our channel subscribe give us comments and follow us on twitter so you can keep up to date whenever we upload new videos and don't do it the long way do it the mr long way
More examples on 2D arrays are available from the Grade 12 Study Opportunities eNotes, which are available in 2014.